Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy, and today I'm here to share some recent reads with you. So it's been a while since I've done an installment of my reading diaries, and today we are going to have a picture book edition. I've been reading quite a few picture books, some of them I'm not sharing in this video because they will be part of my Children's Book Council Award 2024 series, which I'm hoping will start very soon as I'm working my way through those books. But um, yeah. These are some other picture books that I have been reading recently and I thought I would share them with you. The first one is a fairly recent read actually, Solutions for Cold Feet and Other Little Problems by Kerry Sukoshef, I think. And obviously this is a board book and it starts off with, you know, what do you do when you're missing a shoe? It's just a general problem. And it's all the different solutions that you can go through to try and figure out how to solve this problem. And the reason that I wanted to pick this one up and read it was because I thought it would be a really great jumping off point for thinking creatively and flexibly. Now, the solutions in this book are fairly straightforward. It's a book that's designed to help young children problem solve easy problems that they can fix themselves at home. But I can definitely see this being used to extend thinking and think about, okay, well, how can we creatively problem solve this as well? So yes, we can have a very standard answer. Okay, we're gonna go look for our sock and we're gonna check under the couch and we're gonna check in the drawer, but what else could we do? So I like books where you have a little bit of the opportunity to take it in a different direction. So I absolutely loved this and I will probably give it to my niece when she's old enough to need it. But at the same time, I'm also thinking about, well, how can I use this for a little bit of a creative thinking task? Another book I read is a narrative nonfiction title called Meet the Anzacs. This one has been written by Claire Saxby and illustrated by Max Berry. I read this because recently it was Anzac Day here in Australia and we did some work around Anzac Day and what that means and why we recognize Anzac Day here in Australia. And this is a narrative nonfiction picture book that goes into the history of the Anzacs up to their landing at Gallipoli. It doesn't go past the landing. So while it's written for a middle and upper primary audience, I did read it with grade twos and they actually had some really good questions and really wanted to understand what was happening at this time and why people were sent off to war and why we recognize Anzac Day. And that age group is also old enough to begin to understand if they've had family members or relatives who were part of war efforts and the impact that that has on their family. So there, there were a lot of really good questions and this was a really great starting point for that discussion. Then I have a non-fiction picture book. This one is Your Brilliant Brain by Philip Bunting. This is all about the brain. So you might remember earlier in the year, I read a book by Arden Ben Barak, I think it was about equating the brain to the size of a pineapple, which was a much simpler and funnier text about the brain, but still gave a lot of information. This is its probably more technical cousin. So it is definitely written for an older audience. It uses a lot of T3 scientific academic vocabulary. It is very informative. It is purely on the brain and it is really, really fascinating. It is illustrated in Philip Bunting's usual playful style, which also makes it really engaging. And the content that it covers was fascinating. So a lot of this I was revisiting because I haven't actually read a lot about the brain since I was in uni. And it was fun to revisit this and to sort of re acquaint myself with how the brain actually works. I also read Hello Lighthouse by Sophie Blackall. This was the winner of a Caldecott medal, which I didn't realize. And Sophie Blackall had a book last year shortlisted for the CBCA and also has one this year shortlisted. And this book came up when I was sort of doing a little bit of research into Sophie Blackall and I thought, I would really like to read that. And it's gorgeous. It is the story of lighthouse keepers. And it tells the story of a particular lighthouse keeper who lives in this lighthouse with his wife and they have a child there and then over time it is about how technology advances and soon the very traditional fire that is lit to keep the lighthouse shining is replaced by a mechanical light and the lighthouse keeper and his wife and his child move away from the lighthouse so it is about that progression in time and technological advances but also is about almost preserving the history of lighthouse keepers and the amazing, incredible things that they had to do in order to keep the lighthouse running. There's a really lovely sort of explanation at the back of the book from Sophie Blackall on why she wrote the book and what the inspiration was and how she did the research for the book. And the illustrations inside are just stunning. This also does feature a really beautiful fold out page at the end, but it's just a really stunning book. So if you haven't read it, I highly recommend this one. It was really immersive. And for some reason this year, I seem to be stumbling across texts, videos, and books about lighthouses. It must be my thing this year. I also finally read Lila Greer, Teacher of the Year by Andrea Beattie and illustrated by David Roberts. I've been meaning to jump into the Questionnaires series for a while. So I need to get my hands on a few more copies of the books in this series. And I had the best time reading this book. So it is the story of Lila Greer who starts out in school and she is full of worries. She worries about every little thing and she is seen 
by one of her teachers who helps her to understand herself and recognize her strengths and helps her to fit in with the other students. And she does it in a way that is not confronting at all. In fact, Lila doesn't recognize that that's what she's doing for the longest time. And then Lila herself grows up to be a teacher and it's a really beautiful story. I'm not a fan of teachers overall in adult fiction, but in picture books, I think we get some of the best representation of teachers out there and the positive impact they can have on kids' lives, but also how part of their job is not to fix the problem, it's just to be there and to be the support and to help kids to grow into their own. And that is my favorite kind of representation to see. There is The Magical Yet. This one is by Angela DiTalisi and Lorena Alvarez. And this was gorgeous because this is all about that positive growth mindset. The fact that just because you can't do something right now doesn't mean you won't be able to do it in the future. And it is the power of yet. I can't do this yet. And it has gorgeous illustrations, a really wonderful message and just absolutely stunning, bright, colorful pages that just engage you and explores that idea of yet. So thoroughly loved this one. And I think we are about to go into a PLC inquiry around growth mindset. So I'll be taking this one into work now that I finally reviewed it here on this channel. There is Max's Words by Kate Banks with pictures by Boris Kulikov. And this one is just another one about being a wonderful word nerd. Like I love collecting words. You guys have heard me talk about that before here on this channel. And this one is about Max. Everyone in his family collects things. His two older brothers collect coins and what was the other one? Coins and stamps, but they don't share them with Max. So Max decides that he's going to collect words and he collects and amasses a huge amount of words. And as he collects and amasses these words, he begins to play with them and put them into sentences and his brothers become really intrigued by it. And so they, they want to be part of it. And he shares his words with them and they come up with great sentences. Like it is really great for wordplay and for just building kids up into being aware of vocabulary. So I really, really love this one. I'm slowly collecting a bunch of books about being word collectors and I am all here for it. I need more of them. So if you've got any recommendations, leave them down below. And then I also have Business Chickens by Jess McEachin. And this is a gorgeous, very funny story about a chicken named Fran. And in this world, most chickens are business chickens and they go to work and they are sensible and they do their work and they're very calm and ordered and they do what they're supposed to do. And Fran is not like that at all. She's loud and disorderly and disrupts the business chicken world until she finally loses her job, which is very sad. But never fear, Fran finds that that kind of life is not for her anyway. Just because people tell you that that's what you expect, that is not necessarily for you. And Fran sets out to find her own path and boy, does she do it. Her warmth and her light and her absolute joy for things sees her becoming a baker. And of course, she is then able to share that joy with business chickens who are normally very serious, but they can't stay away because her baked goods are just amazing. Absolutely love this. The illustrations in here are awesome. I've mostly read Jess McEachin's nonfiction children's titles. And so when I saw this one, I'm like, I just ha I have to read this. I have to find out what it's like with one of her fiction books because it is just so fun and really, really adorable. So I'm so glad that I read that. And that is my recent reads picture book collection. I will leave information about all of those picture books down below. So feel free to have a chat to me about them in the comments if you've read them or if you haven't, or if you've been inspired to try and find a copy of one of those books to pick it up, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, feel free to share any children's titles that you have been reading and loving recently. I would love to hear and find more recommendations. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.